So, Dion, just a few days ago, on Tuesday, March... Fuck, what was it? It was the 3rd. March 3rd, there was a historic trade between my favorite NFL team, the Buffalo Bills, and your favorite NFL team, the Philadelphia Eagles. A straight-up trade, LaShawn McCoy for Kiko Alonso. Now, this is very, very rare in the NFL for there to be any trades with any high-profile players. LaShawn McCoy is a high-profile superstar, Kiko Alonso, he's he's kind of bubbling, rising star. What are your thoughts so far as an Eagles fan? A true Eagles fan. I disagree. I disagree a lot. I actually caught Nick right here, a.k.a. the true DT, and told him he didn't believe me until he went on the internet and seen it for himself. Not happy about it. I disagree. You can be you be honest. The, the people, it's all love here. If you have to vent at all, go ahead. I saw you post on Facebook. I have a week to stop this trade. I need to get to Philly and bust Chip Kelly's ass. Hmm. Well, when hmm. this trade was uh, hitting ESPN on breaking news, yeah, I felt like that. Um, Chip Kelly is trying to become Belichick, Sean Payton, which is a good... Where no player is above the system and the organization. Belichick, people know he will just, boom, snap a finger, cut you, trade you. He doesn't give a fuck about past history or anything. Richard mm-hmm. Seymour, the Teddy Brute, like, the list goes on and on of players he just said, bye, peace, bitch. Wes yep. Welker. Yep. So... I get that and everything, but I think he's trying a little bit too hard. You have to prove something. Sean Payton and Belichick, they got championships. They now, elite coaches. <laughs> it's funny. I saw like I saw a couple of just pure hate comments of saying like, "Oh, I wonder if he was uh, traded for his gang ties too." But that does like clue us into something because Chip Kelly just did he he did he release Deshaun Jackson straight out last year, right? Yep. For basically no reason. It was maybe he had an Instagram post or something. Well, but Deshaun is still good. Deshaun He's a good Jackson, player. a lot of people in the locker room didn't like Deshaun Jackson. He was really? too cocky. People in the locker room actually didn't like him? Yeah, he was too cocky. He but McCoy, too McCoy was one of his best friends on the yeah, team, right? But he, uh, Deshaun Jackson was talking a lot of junk. Pure cockiness. Well, that's, that's Deshaun Jackson. Yeah, but, but I when mean, you do it with your teammates, which is football is a team sport. It can get on people's nerves. Just it, like Percy Harvin. That's why you see Percy Harvin be moving. He argued with the I, I heard office. Percy Harvin, re- people, they really didn't like him. Mm-hmm. He was trying to actually unite the locker room against Russell Wilson, and they were like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> see, Deshaun Jackson, he had that one of the most famous Eagles moments ever, the Miracle of Meadowlands 2, yep. which I feel like Giant fans, that must have been rough. A punt return as time expires. I mean, Deshaun Jackson, Deshaun Jackson is an electrifying player. Which player leaving the Eagles hurts worse, Deshaun last year or Lushon this year? McCoy. McCoy was worse. He was a uh, number one rusher, rushing yardage. Only and, uh, two years ago. Yeah, but for the last five years, he had the most. Rushing yeah, yards. I saw. I saw this. Even though almost, Adrian Peterson didn't play, well, almost seven thousand. Yeah, well, yeah, for running backs that matters. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So, Deshaun Jackson, yeah, he got incredible speed, but if you push that guy, he's going out of bounds. He's too light. You know, if you have someone like that's close to his speed, let's say Percy Harvin, people like him, he got he got size on him. You can't really just push him, and he's out. Out the pitcher, Deshaun. You get a hand on him, and you more physical with him. He's really, he's really. Yeah, Deshaun easy. really only has one element to his game, and that's vertical speed. And they just getting down the and field. They always like Macklin. A lot of people like team wise and coach wise like Macklin better than Deshaun Jackson. Okay, anyway. but with with. Okay, so here's the thing: like getting rid of McCoy, who it is strange because he, I would say definitively, 
he's the Eagles' best player. I mean, consistent. Really, who who else would you say? Like Foles? Foles isn't better than LaShawn McCoy. No, but I think Foles right now is on the right track. Who? When okay, Foles, okay. When Foles start shooting, uh, throwing interceptions, uh, before he got hurt against the Texans, you have to remember he didn't have that offense on line that was top ranked. So Mark Sanchez, when Mark Sanchez started to look good, the offensive line was fully healthy and it was back. Which player do you, who is the Eagles' best player right now after the trade? Offense? The on the team. On the who team? is the best player on the Eagles? <laughs> Macklin? Macklin can be. I'll Foles? say Macklin for offense. We have to see how Foles it, how Foles gonna be when he comes back. I like Foles because Foles will I chuck, like Foles too. He would chuck a sixty yarder like three times a game to try to get that big play. A lot is right said now, about quarterbacks who go deep because yeah. either you get a pass interference, it's basically a punt, or it's like a long pass. Like there's no downside to throwing deep ever. If you can mm-hmm. do it, do it. That's why the Cardinals were good last year. Yeah. Both Palmer and Drew Stanton could do that. Yeah. So, I'll say offense. I'm going to go choose a side for offense and defense. Uh, Macklin showed out really this year. And he just <laughs> missed. I think he was number seven in yardage out of receivers. Well, I'll top, put, so top ten. Yeah, but he could have hit it because he had about the last four games. He had two games where he only had like a total of 40 yards. But he also had Mark Sanchez throwing. <clears throat> yeah, him, so, <laughs> Sanchez. Yeah. So I'll go give it to Macklin for offense. Uh, for defense, I'll give Barwin. Barwin had a real good Connor year. Barwin. Yeah, I think he was like number three, number three. Yeah, tight, I remember tight with number three. Didn't for he sacks. have? He had like maybe five sacks against Carolina or something crazy like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. So he had like a good like I think like eighteen sacks for the year around there. Okay, so one thing about the Lashawn McCoy for Kiko Alonso trade that is obviously a huge factor. Lashawn McCoy this upcoming season will make the second most among running backs. Adrian Peterson makes, I believe it's like $12.65 million. Mm-hmm. LaShawn McCoy, I think it's $10.27 million. Now, Adrian Peterson probably is not going to be playing this season on that contract. I bet the Vikings will either trade or release him or restructure him. No matter where Adrian Peterson plays, his contract is going to be restructured. So he's going to be making less money. So, LaShawn McCoy is going to be the highest paid running back in the NFL this season. Mm -hmm. A position which the NFL doesn't value as much. Like, think back to the days of Walter Payton, Barry Sanders, Emmitt Smith, Thurman Thomas. We have running backs who are playing for 10 to 15 years as a workhorse. 30 carries a game every game for 15 years. We don't see that anymore. So, they're able to get a lot cheaper at a position which the NFL deems not valuable. And at the same time, bring in a possible rising star on a ridiculously cheap contract. Now, a lot of people have said that it's not good to trade for a player coming off of an ace, like an injury the way he did. Kiko Alonso missed all of the 2014 season with his uh, torn ACL. But he hurt the he hurt his knee before the season started. So he's already close to 100%. And... That missed year will actually help the Eagles in the long run because unlike most players, he was a second-round draft pick. After three years, he'll become an unrestricted free agent. Because Kiko Alonso missed the entire season, he'll become a restricted free agent, so the Eagles will always be able to determine if they want to keep him or not. They don't have to worry about being outbid by another team. So if he turns into, you know, the next Luke Keekley, which that was what... Kiko Alonso's rookie season, statistically, where he had, let's see, he had 159 tackles, two sacks, and four picks. That's basically what Keekley did in his rookie season, and then Keekley was Defensive Player of the Year in his second year. So, when you consider that Kiko Alonso is making about 600000 this year to LaShawn McCoy's $10 million, and then factor in what position it is, do you think the Eagles got enough for McCoy. No. <laughs> McCoy is only 26 years old. So it's not like he's 28, 29. And you get players like that, you know, he could he could run back five yards and gain 20. You know, you automatically have to watch him. Wow, now it. that now that you mention it, Kiko is 24. Yeah. So LaShawn McCoy is only two years older, but Kiko's only had yeah. basically one season. 
Yeah, but you know what happens when you have McCoy and Sproles in the back? You basically had to watch out for a spread. And then what happens with there? You could either dump it off to but Selleck, Macklin, or both running backs. So with that ease, you just had to spread out op- option. Now, if you get one of these running backs from the draft, let's say, like if any of them, I know he came off an injury. The only one I really like is Gurley. That's the only one I really like out the draft myself. So one but, thing I do have to say, <clears throat> so as a Bills fan, there tends to be two sections. There is cocky Bills fans who think that, you know, the Bills are going to be the Patriots every year, which doesn't happen. And then there's the other faction of Bills fans who are saying, what is coming next? I'm sitting here, and I'm very skeptical that Buffalo just traded for a top three player at a position for little cost. For we Buffalo had the second or third best defense in the league last year. All of their defensive statistics were top five without Kiko Alonso. And we brought in one of the best defensive coaches in the league, Rex Ryan. So their thinking was they didn't need Kiko Alonso. But tell me I'm not crazy for thinking CJ Spiller, who's a free agent, who's leaving Buffalo, won't go to Philly, sign with Philly, and, become and with Chip Kelly, he will be better than McCoy is in Buffalo this year. I am waiting for that to happen. You know, that possibly could happen. Um, yeah, y'all basically didn't have to really give up nothing, you know. Well, keep, don't get me wrong. Your defense is already good. It was already top three. So, you know, y'all losing that linebacker. Y'all already was set with that defense. Uh, y'all just need to get a quarterback, I would say. A quarterback is what you need. That's all. Really, if you had that team and you freaking gave it to Alex Smith, I'm pretty sure y'all, I, I actually y'all would, would be. Been, I would be okay with y'all. Alex y'all Smith. be play playoff ball. or Brian Hoyer. Let's not talk about Castle. Fuck you, Castle. Ugh. So, but yeah. all right, that's pretty much everything. So Buffalo got a former rushing champ, and the Eagles got a player whose jersey was once traded for a blowjob at Ralph Wilson Stadium. Buffalo's. How, how do you feel about that? Some guy at a Bills game two seasons ago. Managed to convince a girl that if she gave him oral sex, he would give her a Kiko Alonso jersey. That's the type of player you're getting in Philly. Hmm. I wonder how many <laughs> girls. I wonder how many girls did that for a Jamarco Russell jersey. Look what happened right there. For a who jersey? Jamarcus Russell. Jamarcus Russell. Shut up! How dare you compare <laughs> Kiko Alonso, the legend? He's a Jamar- legend already. The legend of Kiko Alonso is a popular trending hashtag in the Buffalo fan base. Mm. Yes. Now it will be popular in the Philadelphia Eagles community. Kendrick's my guy. I like Alonzo. Well, let's, but let's talk my about guy. the fact that Philly now has two of the top five best coverage linebackers in the league. They, yeah. Kendrick's and Kiko Alonso never have to leave the field ever. Nope. Ever. And then we still got DeMarco Ryan's. Yeah. Well, no, I I heard that they're going to cut him. Oh, they are? Well, see, that's the thing. So they didn't re-sign Jeremy Macklin. That's one, my last point I wanted to get to. They didn't re-sign Jeremy Macklin. But by getting rid of Trent Cole, Kerry Williams, and LaShawn McCoy, and uh, who Todd Harriman's, he was a guard, right, or something? Mm-hmm. They now have, like, over $50 million in cap room. So they for sure can keep Jeremy Macklin, get C.J. Spiller. Like, I think the Eagles are going to be just fine. This trade may help them a lot in the long run. You never want to think the Bills beat you until you can definitively say they beat you. So it's too early for Philly fans to be like, oh, no. I think if Foles is healthy, I think he have a chance to be a young Tom Brady. A chance to be a young Tom Brady. Okay. He already, and he, I... already, he, already, <laughs> he already been under Tom Brady. Tom Brady mentoring him. So All right, kids. I can't think of a better time to end it than right there. Yeah. We have Dion Walker, true Eagles fan, and me, the truth DT. A.K.A. real name. Nick Morley, true Bills fan. Mm-hmm. Bitch. <laughs>